Hi, it's Patrick Hutzel from IntensiveCareHotline.com where we instantly improve the lives of families of critically ill patients in intensive care so that you can have peace of mind, real power, real control and so that you can influence decision making fast even if you're not a doctor or a nurse in intensive care. This is another episode of Your Questions Answered and in last week's episode I answered another question from one of our readers and the question last week was My mother is in intensive care ventilated with a severe flu. The doctors want to perform a tracheostomy and they are not answering my questions. Help! You can check out the answer to last week's question by clicking on the link below this video. In this week's episode of Your Questions Answered, I want to answer another question from one of our readers. And the question this week is from Heather in the United States. And Heather asks, My partner is in intensive care on a ventilator. The intensive care team wants to do a tracheostomy and I want to have him extubated. What do I do? This is actually part one of a series of questions from Heather that will be following soon. So Heather writes, Hi Patrick, my partner is intubated and has been for two weeks and he has been blind for four years. He passes the weaning trials but he gets a little agitated and his blood pressure rises. His main line came out and he was off all medications for several hours and I was able to calm him down. The doctors want a tracheostomy and a feeding tube but I want to have him extubated and off the ventilator. I believe the sedation and just the whole situation is very scary. What do I do? I don't think they are lowering the sedation enough or allowing it enough time to wear off before trying to make him follow commands. He was admitted to hospital on December the 2nd with pneumonia. He was moved to ICU and intubated on December the 5th with bacterial pneumonia and MRSA. On December the 15th a CT scan was done and lesions on his right lung, I'm assuming an empyema, were discovered. On December the 16th he was extubated for the first time. After he was extubated he was delirious. He was not given any more pain medications. They gave Giordon and Adivan to calm him down. They also stopped antibiotics. He was delirious when he was intubated and afterwards. I don't think he regressed. I think he was still very sick and in pain. On December the 22nd I had him moved to a different hospital where he was reintubated before I arrived. Evidently they weren't in, even informed he had been in ICU at the other hospital. He's still intubated. He throws his hands up. I don't even know if it's voluntary. It's almost like he's dreaming that something is coming at him. He does bite the tube. He only has bottom teeth. On December the 26th they put in a chest tube to try to drain the infection. He has empyema and pneumonia. They did surgery on him on December the 31st and he did well afterwards. The drain tubes are out and the thoracic surgeon signed off. He had kidney issues. The kidney doctor signed off out today as well. Anyway, in total he was intubated 11 days with pneumonia. Then he was off the ventilator for 7 days. Then he was reintubated 14 days from now with pneumonia and what they thought was TB or a fungal infection. It turned out to be a pneumonia and empyema. Also, they are giving him diprovan and fentanyl for sedation and seroquel in his feeding tube. From what I have read, he probably doesn't even remember coming to the hospital. He became kind of delirious before the intubation. He certainly was delirious the seven days when he was extubated but had been taken off pain medications and antibiotics. 
He had lots of mucus and no eating or drinking and no physical therapy. He was still very sick. Hallucinations and delirium are symptoms of his illness and side effects of some of his medications. He was still very sick when he was extubated and they really just stopped treating him. I don't think he regressed because of being extubated. I think he was not properly diagnosed and treated. He passes weaning trials and then gets agitated. I'm sure he's very much afraid. He's clinically better. I think given his circumstances agitation is natural and I think if he's off the ventilator then some of the meds won't be necessary and his mental state will improve. Whereas now he still doesn't know or understand or remembers what's going on. For all he knows is he has just woken up in, a some, in something you see in a horror movie. A tracheostomy may be better than the mouth tube but I think we could take a chance and see if his mental state improves after being extubated. I think a tracheostomy would just be another scene. He needs to be able to communicate and to be communicated with to fully grasp what's going on. He can't do that because he's panicking. I'm pretty sure he is. Remember, he's blind and has to have faith that what everyone's saying is true and I don't think on the middle of all of this that it's going to happen and I also think adding something else traumatic isn't going to help. I think he can breathe by himself and I think pulling that tube out would let him catch his breath and start helping him move around and get the medications out of his system. With that we'll gain his trust and he'll gain his physical and mental health. Thank you so much Heather. Hi Heather, thank you so much for clarifying and writing in such great detail. Now I've got a really good picture to guide you. And once again, well done for standing up, have a say and seeking out help. Most families of critically ill patients in intensive care don't seek out for help. They don't do their own research and as a result they have no peace of mind, no control, no power and no influence. If anything, they are intimidated by the perceived power and the perceived authority of the intensive care team. You and your partner must have had a terrible time over the last few weeks with what you are describing and it's good that you want to take the next steps. Know this. From what you are describing, Heather, I would say that doing a trial extubation without a tracheostomy seems the right thing to do. The intensive care team may well argue that given your partner's history with multiple failed extubations and multiple reintubations since December the 2nd, he will have a high chance of failing extubation again and he'll end up with a tracheostomy anyway. But you should also listen to your inner voice and to your intuition and gut feeling because you know your partner best and you know how he'll deal with challenges. If you think you should have another trial extubation, then you should make that very clear and not have it any other way. From what you are describing, Heather, I can see challenges that may well stand in the way of your partner getting successfully extubated, such as his relatively long ICU stay of, a, of around a month, his confusion and maybe his blindness, although his blindness shouldn't stop him from breathing without the ventilator if people communicate well. The confusion of your partner that you are referring to as well as his physical and mental health are certainly challenges, however they can be overcome with the right strategies. Often delirium, confusion and agitation in intensive care don't go away overnight and they need to be managed appropriately. Again, there are some challenges that your partner is dealing with that leave room for him to needing the tracheostomy, such as his confusion and delirium. However, more than that, I think given his many ups and downs since admission to intensive care over the last month, leave room for your partner needing the tracheostomy. However, I strongly believe you should be pushing for the trial extubation first and then take everything from there. You are certainly correct to point out that your husband would be extremely anxious and it's a nightmare situation. 
If the trial extubation goes well, everybody wins. If the trial extubation fails and your partner will need the tracheostomy, he may still come good because after the tracheostomy has been inserted, your partner won't need as much sedation like the Deprivan and the fentanyl because the tracheostomy tube is much easier to tolerate compared to a breathing tube through the mouth. A tracheostomy certainly has some benefits and only after a trial extubation has been deemed unsuccessful. You are also referring to trust. Trust is extremely important. However, as you have also pointed out correctly, most critically ill patients in intensive care will not remember much, if anything, about their stay in ICU. Whilst it's horrible to watch your loved ones suffer, rest assured that your partner won't remember much of his intensive care stay. Also, you also might have to challenge the intensive care team about their intentions. For example, why are they so adamant of doing the tracheostomy straight away without the trial extubation? Are there some monetary incentives to do it straight away? Do they want to keep the ICU bed occupied because they are quiet at the moment? If they extubate your partner successfully, he might leave ICU relatively quickly and they may miss out on payments or funding for an expensive ICU bed. There may well be legitimate reasons to perform the tracheostomy. However, you need to get comfortable to challenge the intensive care team, watch their reaction and get to the bottom of things quickly. You will only be able to get to such a deep level of peace of mind, control, power and influence if you are not intimidated by the intensive care team's perceived power and perceived authority. In order to successfully manage the intensive care team so that they don't manage you, you should be looking at our free information to get strategies about managing the intensive care team successfully and efficiently. You can do so with our free instant impact report that you can download here by entering your email address. I really hope that helps Heather. Here are also some related articles that you should check out as well that will help you to make an informed decision when it comes to ventilation and tracheostomy. So one of the articles and videos is how long should a patient be on a ventilator before having a tracheostomy. The other article is why does my loved one need a tracheostomy in intensive care. The next article is why do doctors in intensive care insert a tracheostomy after an induced coma? And the next article or video you should check out is Tracheostomy and weaning of the ventilator in intensive care. How long can it take? I can also be available for a free 20 minute Skype consultation. My Skype ID is patrick.hutzel. Thank you and kind regards. So, how can you have peace of mind, control, power and influence whilst your loved one is critically ill in intensive care? You get to that all-important feeling of peace of mind, control, power and influence when you download your free Instant Impact Report now by entering your email below. In your free Instant Impact Report, you learn quickly how to get peace of mind real power and real control and how you can influence decision making fast whilst your loved one is critically ill in intensive care. Your free instant impact report gives you in-depth insight that you must know whilst your loved one is critically ill or is even dying in intensive care. Sign up and download your free instant impact report now by entering your email below. In your free Instant Impact Report, you learn how to speak the secret intensive care language so that the doctors and the nurses know straight away that you are an insider and that you know and understand what's really happening in intensive care. In your free report, you will also discover how to ask the doctors and the nurses the right questions. Discover the many competing interests in intensive care and how your critically ill loved one's treatment may depend on those competing interests. How to eliminate fear, frustration, stress, struggle and vulnerability even if your loved one is dying. You get five Q 
killer tips and strategies helping you to get on the right path to peace of mind, control, power and influence in your situation. You'll get real world examples that you can easily adapt to your and your critically ill loved one's situation. How to stop being intimidated by the intensive care team and how you will be seen as equals. You'll get crucial behind the scenes insight so that you know and understand what's really happening in intensive care and how you need to manage doctors and nurses in intensive care and it's not what you think. Thank you for tuning into this week's Your Questions Answered and I'll see you again in another update next week. Make sure you also check out our blog section for more tips and strategies or send me an email to support at intensivecarehotline.com with your questions. Also check out our products page for our ebooks, videos and where you can also get one-on-one -on -one consulting. This is Patrick Hutzel from IntensiveCareHotline.com and I'll see you again next week in another update.